Hello and welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, I'll guide you step by step on creating a watchOS application using Swift UI and a couple of libraries to handle the network requests and JSON responses. So keep watching this video and we will have a beautiful and functional independent app for your Apple Watch. So let's quickly look at the prerequisites. So first off, you'll need Xcode and I would uh, prefer that it should be version 11 or above. And secondly, you need to have Cocoa Pods installed in your Mac system. And if you don't have that, you can just simply go to CocoaPods.org and uh, get started on that. Thirdly, we'll be using the newsapi.org's API. So you guys can go ahead and register on that website to get your free API key. And lastly, you'll need an Apple Watch. But uh, again, that's an optional because Xcode will provide you with watchOS simulators. So it's not really a necessary step for this particular tutorial. But sure, if you want to preview the app in your Apple Watch, you can do that. So let's begin. So to start, we'll open Xcode and tap on create a new project. And here you should go to the watch OS tab and select a watch app. Click next and here you can give a name to your app. I'm just going to call it quick news, but you guys can, but feel free to call it however you want. And we'll just make sure that the language is selected as Swift and the user interface is selected as Swift UI. And just hit next. You can save it wherever you want. I'll just put it on the desktop for now. Okay, now that the project is set up, let's get to code. So on the right side, tap on the resume button to quickly build your app and trigger the preview on the canvas. So now we have our code on the left side and the preview on the right side. We will edit the code and rebuild the preview so that we can see our app come to life with each step. So here I'll just replace hello world by quick news, which is the name of my app. And I'll add a few more modifiers to this text. I'll set the font as title and font weight as 10. Let's try to preview this. So as you may notice that the preview will change as soon as you update your code. You can also tap on each element in the preview, for example this text, and our code will get highlighted. So now let's wrap our text object inside a vertical stack. So a vStack is a container that stacks up the elements vertically. It, it is very useful for keeping consistency and order in your UI. And it will also let you apply alignment and padding properties to the whole container instead of trying to accommodate each element on the screen manually. So after this is done, let's add some more elements to our view. So let's add another text element below the one we already have. So this will be the tagline for our application and we can give it the same font weight. So this looks good for now. Now let's create another view that takes us to the list of articles. So I'll just press command N to make a new file and select a Swift UI view. And I'll call this articles view. So now let's replace the words hello world with articles. And we'll put this inside of a VStack as well.
We check the preview for this. And let's leave it like that for now. We'll come back to this file later. So now before we can start adding articles to our app, we first need to define what an article is and what will it contain. And in order to tell the UI what to display. So let's go to news API org and you should log in to this website and get your API key and let's look at the sample of the data that we're going to get from the news API so we'll base this on the sample to define the article object so let's create a new file and this time we'll make a new script file and just call it article and this would be our data model for the article class now let's define what all variables we'll be needing inside our articles structure So each article will contain a unique identifier, a title, a short description of the headline, the author's name, the link to the article on its source, a link to the headline image, the time and date of publishing, and a short snippet of the content. So now let's add an initializer method which will let us create article object and represent them visually. The initializer method takes everything that an article requires and transforms it into a usable Swift object. So at this moment, we'll proceed to install the libraries that we'll require for our app. So let's save and close our application and we'll open up terminal and we can change directory to our project file. And here we can run the command pod init to initialize our pod file. So this command will create a new file called pod file in your root folder. So let's open our pod file using Xcode. And after this last line, which is quick news watch kit extensions, we'll add our frameworks. So we'll be using the Kingfisher framework for fetching images from the internet. And we'll be using the Almofire framework to make network calls. And we're using the Swifty JSON framework for decoding our JSON objects into Swift objects. And just save this file and we can close this and run the command pod install. This will install all of these dependencies and frameworks. So after that is done, we'll just open our directory and we'll see that a new file, which is an Xcode workspace has been created. So we'll open this file. So all of our libraries have been installed. 
So now we have basically set up our UI and installed all of the external dependencies that we will be needing in this project. So I guess that's it for this part of the video. I'll make a part two of this video very, very soon where we'll make network calls and a few more UI tweaks to get our fully functional application up and running. So thank you guys for watching this one and make sure you subscribe so that you can catch the part two of this tutorial. Thank you.